What's going on guys, Bengal here. Today we got a special guest on the channel, uh, Tay Gowan, corner UCF. This was a, a long time coming, so I'm super excited to do it. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me on the channel, man. Oh yeah, we got, we got you versus Stanford here. Uh, super interesting matchup. You're going up against a number of uh, either NFL players or future NFL players. So uh, it was fun to watch you at work. Uh, a lot of man coverage and a lot of uh, playing on an island and just shutting guys down. So this yes, is uh, super fun to watch. So you had a lot of really good players um, at UCF with you. How important is it for you to, uh, you know, as a cornerback, obviously you're doing your own thing on an island a lot of the time, but obviously playing DB, there's a lot of relying on other guys, knowing where you have help. And you have Aaron Robinson in the slot you know, really good player. Richie Grant, you know, in the box and over the top sometimes. Does that make your job a lot easier, knowing that you got these great players on the field with you? Man, it makes my job a lot easier, man, knowing that I can trust these guys and these guys got God-given God ability, man. So it just takes a lot of pressure off me at corner knowing that these guys have my back with me. So. Yeah, you're probably one of those guys, guys though, that you like to be on the island. It seems like you like the challenge, you like the one-on-ones, you like people uh you know trying you down the field you got that recovery speed so i feel like you probably relish the opportunity to uh to have teams try you and showcase that you're not letting anyone stack you no one's getting over the top uh and you have these opportunities to make these pass breakups if they even throw the ball your way at all right that's why i try to live and die in that band cover and try to show people that that guy on island is real man so <laughs> i want to play that i want to show people that I can do that. Do you see yourself as more of a, uh, I mean, obviously you're going to do a lot. Uh, I think a cover three scheme could be really good for you as well. But do you, you know, have a preference, whether, whether you run man more often uh, or zone? What's your preferred scheme fit? Um, I, think, I think both work because, like, if y'all turn on the Juco film, any, like this audience watching turn on the Juco film, most of my pits came from cover three zone. So I feel like I can do both. Just showing that what type of corner I am, I like to display that man, that man cover. Yeah, you had a lot of ball production at Juke. I think you had like what six interceptions or something like that. Yes, sir. And yeah. they, they called one back, so I was, like, I was mad about that. <laughs> um, I think that it, it, it's interesting because uh, not that there are red flags or anything with you. That's not that's not right. But there, people are uh, maybe a little bit concerned that there's only the one year at the D1 level playing uh, you know, at a major program and, and UCF, you guys had some, some pretty stiff competition. And of course you had to opt out of 2020. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you're excited to get back to football. What was the toughest part about um, making the JUCO transition? The toughest part is really about adjusting to the speed. Mm -hmm. I feel like college, college is way faster than JUCO. So, and you know, UCF uh, at the time was going at a faster pace. Uh, that's how we ran our offense. So. That was the toughest part for me. You're probably on the field a lot when you have when you have UCF running that like hurry up and, and trying to just keep the tempo up. You're probably right. you know playing uh, maybe 40 minutes a, a game out there on an island. So I okay, mean, we almost feel like we played the whole. Game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, you're gonna start out. Looks like a, kind of a wide split almost on the uh, on the numbers. You're going to be in, what is this? This is soft shoe. You're playing a soft man coverage. Seems like you do this quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it's actually, uh, we're actually like in the rip list concept. Mm -hmm. um, so basically both of the corners are locked up and the nickel is locked up. All right, let's go ahead and watch this here. Obviously with DBs, there are, there's not always a ton of action going on. And sometimes the best plays that you're making, the ball's not even coming your way. I mean, are you a guy that... Uh, you're fine not being involved in the progress as long as they're not going after you you feeling like you're winning on that play is that what right. you prefer exactly like that's how i feel like you ain't coming at me then i'm gonna do my job i mean let's check it out here i mean you're you don't jam or anything but you're in just soft man coverage and uh you shadow him the entire way you sink your hips when he does and that I that's a pretty good better. player down there my hands. My mm -hmm. hand placement could have been better yeah it seems like uh did you try to apply the jam there yeah, I think it was like the first the first play jitters like hey, get, these, mm -hmm. get these jitters out and man, let's get rocking. Yeah, your feet are pretty good though, overall. Um, and you're playing what is that? Keeping them the outside sideline, another defender basically. Yes, sir. So we'll see. I think this is a run play. They're gonna stretch out. You tight end, I think, is gonna kick out. Yeah. I'm gonna set the edge. <laughs> Force everything back inside. You're probably the lightest edge defender of all time. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a tough assignment there against a the tight end. You hold your own at least, but uh, that, that's no easy feat. But yeah, I mean, you do force him back inside, 
and you you know you have help there linebackers even the safety is going to come up you know you're going to have them making plays i think that's probably a big part of playing corner is just relying on other guys to do their job as well yeah that 111 um, the coverage yeah that is another just you play a lot of uh, soft man coverage and i don't know it feels like your feet are a real strength and uh, obviously like not everyone is as gifted as you are you know from birth with the size and the length to play the corner i feel like in the way that the nfl is going your prototype size and speed is exactly what teams are looking for you know you're probably what a little over six two i think your arms look long as anything a lot of times in in press coverage it seems like you're able to get your arms on the receiver before they can initiate contact that's got to be a pretty big strength of yours right yeah that's that's a, one of my biggest strengths just allowing myself to um use my hands at the line and disrupt the timing yeah this this is really good stuff i mean he tries what tries a, just a little straight release pretty much and mm -hmm. Nowhere to go. Kind of hard to see if he was even involved <laughs> in the progression. Seems like they were trying to go underneath. Right, I'm a little hype. Look at me. I'm a little hype. Baby. <laughs> let's let's see what else here. More soft shoe. Play action. Hey, physical at the line. Th there you go with the jam. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so what are you doing off the snap here? You're just trying to mirror the uh, the CB. Or excuse me, mirror the receiver as a CB yeah. and and you see what he's yeah, doing. The, um, yeah, this is a true man. We're in a true man here, so I'm just trying to um, stick with my guy, like mm -hmm. give him no room, no room for to catch the ball at all. So, how important is is game film before a game? Are you watching every receiver, seeing their different release packages, and and seeing based on the formation what route they might be running? Is that a big yes, part sir. of playing corner? Yes, sir. We um we, every week we had the players' faces on the wall, like to make sure like. <laughs> That's fun. Have like photograph memory. Who you are? How? Like, what's your weight? Your height? Your favorite plays? Like, man, film is real big important, especially um, especially in college because a lot of receivers are gonna give you different things. It's gonna be more important in the NFL too. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to my advantage. This is one of the catches you allowed this game, and it's kind of tough because it's a slant. You're going up against a tight end that's Colby Parkinson. He was a fourth round pick of the Seahawks this past year, so that's an NFL player and you're probably not going to be someone that's matched up against a tight end too often in the league. And he just makes a really tough catch here. Um, but, you know, what's particularly impressive to me about this play is how you're able to get your, your arms on him first, your hands on him first. And he has super long hands. He's a super big player. But you pretty much smother him off the snap. And, of course, on a slant, you're probably expecting help over the middle. Right. You know what I was thinking? Um, before um, pregame, we knew that anytime he lined out, lined out, Mm -hmm. he, was, it was, he was getting the ball, so I knew that in my head. I'm like, he's getting the ball. Let me stop this route because it's going to be big when I stop this route because he's a big-time player. So I, I, I feel like I was all over him. Um, I had my hands in there. He just got a little more on this and then it was able to grab it. I was trying to knock it out so so bad. I was like, oh, man, he still caught it. I mean, that is a perfect throw. The throw doesn't get any better than that. If that's even, you know, a couple inches more towards the middle of the field, uh, he's got to stretch his arms out. You probably have a better chance to get the pass break up, help over the middle at the, with the linebacker spot as well. That's just a really good throw and a really good catch in traffic by an NFL caliber player. Yeah, Let's check a, it out over the middle. I mean, the ball placement is, is just fantastic here. It's just threading the needle, and it's really the only spot that that's a completable pass. You're all well, over him. I'm still him. trying to get it out. I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, Damn. Oh, this is, see, this is a fun play because. It almost seems like the receiver is a little bit slower out of his break. Is that an indicator to you that it's probably not going to be a vertical route and you can just shadow underneath? Because you smother right, the route completely. Right, because guys ain't going to really stutter and stutter and try to get out. They're going to mm -hmm. really try to get out if they're going to get into their route. So that, that that comes with film study, knowing like, okay, he's when he stutters, he's doing a short um, concept rep. It seemed like from what I saw, and I watched you probably play three or four games, it seems like you do your best work playing underneath, but the fact that you do have the deep speed as well, like we're going to see later to uh, to break up some of those vertical routes, it seems like uh, you really can be the complete package at corner in the next level. Yes, sir. And I want to display that. Backs on an island, bottom of the screen. You weren't really a guy, from what I could tell, traveled too much. Uh, is that just by design with the defense? Yeah, that's, that's just how the defense worked. Um, I knew that coming into the program, so I went... I'm too, I wasn't too mad about that situation. Mm -hmm. 
But I can play. I want teams to know I can play either side. Oh, like I did in JUCO. I play both sides. I can play both sides here. I'm sure they know. This is this is just great. Uh, obviously, like you're going to be able to get a little bit handsier in college, and and, and no one's going to ever call that. Uh, when you're you know hand fighting with a receiver, even like tugging at their jersey, how important is it to to put that in a spot where you're not going to get called and, and just try to be casual with it, and not extend the arms? Is that something you practice? Yes, sir. Because I know like um, I know receivers get a little get away with a little more than mm-hmm. what we get away with, so. I try to practice on those little tugs, and that's why I was telling him right there. I like I told you a little bit, but I'm here. <laughs> that's why I was telling him there. I told you a little bit, but I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. How much so do I you talk to the opposing receiver during the game? Are you getting in their head, or are you just trying to rock and let your play do the talking? Yeah, I let I let my play do the talking, but uh, every once in a while I, I say something to him just to let him know like I'm here and like we having fun out here. I want you to give me your best because at at the end of the day I'm working on my craft. Oh yeah, and another time you're just absolutely smothering him another slow release it looks like he went for a stretch release after kind of like a slower walk up and then stretch release there you're all over it right so down here at the bottom i'm in, I'm in um in the rip little concept again so i'm keeping him inside i'm forcing him inside so that's why i'm head yeah up you know where your help is shoulder. exactly Ooh. okay we got some we got some off coverage for the first time this game from what i can tell and that's like are you bailing off off the rip there is that uh yeah, you gonna be yeah, responsible be for the deep third? Yeah, I got I got all deep third right here. And when the season went on, we kind of eliminated that back pedal, but mm-hmm. yeah, let's take another but, look. Yeah, I got I got I got deep third, but um, we went to just bailing out. So so the back pedal basically predicting the snap. That's by design. You guys stop doing that at some point in the year. Uh, yeah, I, I think after this game, cause it just it just felt weird, like. Mm-hmm. Bell and then going back to a backfield, just bail out and just stay at um, stay at the bell position. Yeah, it seems like you like give that. a little bit like with that design, you just give up a little bit of like free ground there, especially if it's not like a deep route. Uh, right. I imagine if it's something vertical, like yeah, it's shut down. But if he does a digs or something like that, uh, it's obviously a lot of free space with no safety help over the middle. That's just that's tough. Was that Aaron Robinson in there? Yeah, my dog right there. Real dog. That's a tough play. I mean, obviously, boundary corner on an island is tough to play because if you make one mistake, you're you know you're cooked. But slot corner is especially tough to play because you're responsible for so much. You have to read so much and react to so much. So what was that KJ Costello at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, little, quarterback. Little, little wildcat action. <laughs> you got in his face a little bit. Probably your only time to hit the quarterback. Really, man, they're really rocking with this wildcat, huh? Yeah, they started um, trying to move the ball a little more because they couldn't do nothing in the past game. Yeah, you can see the score. It's just getting out of hand. Uh, it was like, what, I, I feel like a three-possession game at this point at least. Right, you're like 20, 20 something. Yeah, 20, yeah 20, 21 zip. zip. You got to quit the game. Go home. <laughs> oh, that would have been a nice play. Yeah, I mean, the UCF secondary, as you obviously know better than anyone, you guys had some players out there. Man, we had some dogs, man. My dog Richie Grant, my dog AC, A-Rock, and the Vail, man. I feel like that was one of the strongest secondaries I played with. I mean, it would have had to be, right? I mean, coming from JUCO, and now you got, with you, you got three NFL players in the secondary with just this year alone. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen next year. Right. It's got to take... You know, a lot of the pressure off knowing that, like, you just got great players out there making plays. It, it's got to make your job easier, too, when you're playing with a lead because the pressure is off. You can just kind of play your game. Mm, I try to get some hustle points right there. I tried to get them before he got in there. Yeah, it's I'm just a tough the, play. Yeah, get off my block. Try to go get the tackles. Ah. Yeah, we're going to see a little bit later in this game. Your tackling technique's pretty interesting. You just kind of throw your shoulder at the legs. But it gets the job done. That's the thing. It's like people want to talk about, you know, like form tackling, what whatnot. But it's going to be tough for a DB, uh, you know, with your size. You're a little bit lankier. Uh, but if you can come in and make the tackle, you're making the tackle at the end of the day. Right. Yes, sir. And that's one thing I'm going to um, improve on in the league. I'm only going to get better at my tackling. So. Here we go. Yeah, this, uh, uh, is that Richie? Yeah, that's a, a missed opportunity. Come on, Richie. <laughs> Come on. I was going to lead him all the way to this, though. 
I mean, he reads it beautifully. He goes late over the deep middle of the field. Absolute no-no. You can't believe it. Richie can't believe it. Uh, no one can believe it. That's tough. He but was so it, ready to run. That's my dog, though. He made up for it. Oh, he's making play. I was watching a lot, a lot of 2019 UCF, a lot of 2020 UCF. Uh, Richie Grant is all over the field all the time. Yes, sir. It's like I'm trying to do my job and make a play at the same time. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you really can't commit too hard to the inside because then right. you are the only guy left on the outside. If you right. try to cut this to the inside, you're going to get blocked in. And then the back, obviously, if he's got good enough vision, is going to cut this to the outside. That's 15 or 20 extra yards. So, I mean, you really do a good job not overcommitting there, not overselling, because that's that really could have been, you know, maybe even 30 extra yards down the sideline. Exactly. Instead, it's only like three. So that, exactly. That's what Coach emphasized. Like, do your job first, man. Worry about the rest. Yeah, the rest yeah, of you made, take made care of yourself. I made, a, I, like, I made a second guess what he's going to like. But I know I can clean it up more and just uh, shed it. Uh-uh. Some of them hit him. Yeah, I mean, that's physical football at the bottom of the screen. Looks like uh, number four is taking out the struggles of being down by four possessions now on you. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get a little aggressive. That's, he was trying to talk, starting to talk a little more. You say, let the scoreboard do the talking. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not even close at this point. He's just mad he can't get open. Yeah, so you actually make a good play on the football here. This is part of the tackling technique we were talking about earlier that's that's interesting. I think your lateral uh, movement here is spectacular, especially for a guy your size. You do a really great job of uh, slipping the blocks and making the play. I thought he was going to run back outside. Now that's why I had. I make sure he didn't come back outside. Then I had win again. But yeah, coach had replayed this after the game. Coach had replayed this play in the on team room, so I feel like I did good. Uh. Yeah, that's a good play. Um, so the draft process has been unusual this year compared to years past. I'm sure you don't have experience with that because, uh, you know, you've only been or, or going to be drafted once. But what has the draft process been like? Have you been Zoom interviewing with teams or how are you talking to these guys? And yet, you, you know, a pro day. What's been going on with your uh, with your off season so far and your so draft yeah, process? While I, there, while I was down to Fort Lauderdale training, um, I was getting um, some Zoom calls from NFL teams. Basically, just wondering why I opt out and who am I as a person, and just basically going over film like we're doing now. And I feel like I killed every zone that was um, presented to me, every opportunity, uh, every phone call that was um, called to my phone. I feel like I killed the phone calls. So, and I feel like I killed the pro day. So oh yeah, you were, you ran pretty play. well. You were pretty agile. I think you were what unofficial four four one. Yes, sir. So you can fly for someone, especially who's who's six two plus. Um, again, we talked about it, that prototypical size and speed that teams are looking for now at cornerback, especially in like some of these covered three systems. You're gonna showcase what you can do here. Take away the deep third. Now we hear all the time about teams asking players interesting questions and weird questions. Do you have a, a weird question the team asked you that kind of caught you off guard? Maybe not even like football related. Just a weird question. Mm, now nah, teams pretty was pretty straightforward. I mean, I, I didn't get I didn't get those too many uh, real questions. That's I good feel to like hear. I don't have real conversations, mm -hmm. so I don't feel like um, they needed to ask me a weird question. Certainly fair. So you did opt out of 2020. You were focusing on uh you know the safety of your family. That's commendable and respectable. Um, but I mean, how have you been dealing with this? this virus type situation you just been uh training with with uh, coaches and whatnot in the off season or, or what have you been doing to you know sharpen your craft while not being in action oh uh, most importantly um what i was doing was protecting my daughter first mm -hmm. and foremost. secondly i got my degree and congratulations yes sir appreciate that um, i got my degree and i was able to um like get stronger in the areas i need to get stronger in this off season due to me not playing um i was able to um lock in with an agent i was able to um go to, like i said go to fort lauderdale and work on the things i need to work on and it just gave me that um that time of my my life where i i could connect with my daughter more so mm -hmm. i think that was the biggest biggest thing about me um up to now just being with her making sure her safety was most importantly so yeah you got to get your priorities in order but it really right. does have to be exciting now that the tape is speaking for itself you're getting the proper amount of hype at the position uh for you with the only you know the one year so 
I mean, how excited are you to, to play in the NFL and get that signing bonus and really rock out and, and you know earn a starting job? Man, I'm so excited. I want the, I want the, um, the people that support me and support you to know that I've been playing football all my life. I've been playing since I was five years old, and this is always what I wanted to do. And for me to put my daughter first, it just show you what type of person I am. So mm-hmm. I'm more than excited, man. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with emotion because this this won't be possible without God. So I'm just, I man, like you said, I'm I'm thankful, man. This is a uh, this is the first time you get tested vertically this game. This is an interesting play because we haven't seen you try to get tested. No one's really given you a vertical shot. You do a good job to mirror at, at the snap here, and you're completely smothering him. And it's funny because 13's a big player. 13's a big-time player. Uh, right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times with cornerbacks, uh, they're smaller at the position. You know, you see a lot of 5'10", 5'11", some 6-foot guys. But you're out here. You're like a giant at cornerback. You're able to <laughs> smother these guys. And you wouldn't be able to tell that this guy is huge and, and, and big and strong and fast, and you're just all over him. But he does a really sneaky move here. It looks like he uh, pushes your hips, which you know no ref's ever going to call that. Creates a little bit of extra separation to get you off balance, but you still come back and recover. You grab his hand there at the end. I think that's another <laughs> sneaky move. Hey, I was fighting for my life. That, see, hey, I, hey, I was in my head. I was like, you, I promise you not catch the ball. I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for everything. You see, that's the difference, though, between making the play and not making the play. Because right there, you grab his hand. You know, the ball's about to arrive. Uh, you know, you're probably about, what, five, six, seven yards down the field. You grab his hands, and that's probably what throws him off, and he's not able to make this catch. You get your hand back in there. And that's the difference between, what, 40 yards? You know, maybe even a touchdown if he's able to, uh, to get up the field. You know, and it doesn't have to be on that specific play. It's like the idea, the concept. But it, yeah, it shows the fight. It shows the awareness to uh, to grab his hand there. That's not easy to do, especially deep down the field, running full speed, trying to get back in the play. Because that, that could have been huge. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is um, not easy. What, what happened was I was trying to get my body in from, like you said, you pushed my hips a little bit. I was like, oh, that threw me off. I was trying to, get, <laughs> I was trying to um, look back for the ball because I knew it was coming. You kind of threw me off. So that's where that makeup speed comes into play, where I, I, I got to fight for everything I want. So. I was fighting, man. Yeah, this this could have been really, really bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. With just one false like, step. Man, I was like, man, you just not catch it, whatever I got to do. I mean, you do a really good job staying with the route for the most part. It's just like the, the casual get punched in the hip, basically, with just a little bit off balance. But the recovery speed's excellent because this is a touchdown for a lot of different players. It's a pretty good ball, and, you know, if he's able to make a clean catch, that, that's setting up Stanford for a big score potentially. Right. So that, that is a really good play. That could have been a change of the game. So just me, just, just me um, fighting, I think that will help in the end. Because yeah, if I would gave her, I feel like he catches it, and it's a different game. I mean, you see, you see DBs just give up all the time in college. I mean, I'm a Big 12 fan. I watch Texas, and, uh, you know, you got these DBs out here that – and they're playing different concepts too. It's like really more college style concepts. And what you're doing regularly is what you're going to do in the NFL, which is you know a lot of uh, playing an, on an island, uh, you know, cover three. Sometimes it's bail, um, you know, cover three down the sideline, responsible for the deep third. But like you know, it, what you're doing is not easy. I want to emphasize that for the people that 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 don't see everything and, and don't watch film and, and aren't familiar with uh, you know football concepts. What you guys ran at UCF was a lot of complicated uh, coverages, and I think you do a pretty good job overall in, in a lot of the games. I think the pit game was was an interesting one um, where it was something maybe you guys hadn't seen too much before, and there were seems like maybe some coverage uh, miscommunications. Yeah, they was all mess around us today of like mm-hmm. um, getting our linebackers involved. So first time we had seen that all season. Good feet movement. Uh, this would have been a crazy I I play. Help, I know, I know, this, I know, I got help though. That's that's the biggest part on this one. I'm like, I know I got, I know I got help. And this, and this, I think yeah, third and long, they got to take a shot. So that's why we kind of played like that. Yeah, it, it seems like you really do know where your help is because you know you're gonna have the safety over the top. It looks like you give one more like check back, almost a hesitation to see if there's anything underneath. Uh, right. You know you have safety help. You're not really gonna be too worried about giving that up. If he does his job right, and he does, and this is almost a fantastic play on the ball. Woo! Well, can't boy with the AC. 
<laughs> well, almost looks like he's hurt on the end, Collier. Well, that would have been a that would have been a crazy Ooh. play. Landed right on the shoulder. It's tough. But it's thirty eight to seven already. Stanford is just like grasping for anything they can. Tried to take the big shot, wasn't there. And that's just that's perfect. Mm, yeah, good movement. I mean, and look at your leverage too. You basically force them all the way to the sideline. And uh, obviously, you're not going to be able to do much on the sideline. Sideline's another defender. Right. You use it perfectly. You know where your help is. And he's completely out of the play. Yeah, it looks like a lot of the time the length is so helpful for you at cornerback because, I mean, a lot of these receivers are used to going up against smaller DBs and they're able to use their size with their hands um, or even maybe more athleticism sometimes. But you just don't allow that because you're so big. I think a lot of receivers aren't used to going up against a receiver or a corner that's as long as you are. And it's not yeah. easy to fight off that length, especially if you get your hands on them first. Yes, sir. That's why coach tell me all the time, you utilize your tools, man. Mm -hmm. So I try, I try my best on here to play. Yeah, it seems like they're not even trying to test you at this point. This is the first time that the progression's even been like towards your side in a while. Playing some zone here. Break this down for look. me. What's the I read? Mean, so we're in a match concept to this field right here. I got D third. Uh, nickel got this flat right here, and the safety just gone. The safety got whatever come back inside to him, or he's just gonna help me. So I, um, I know, I know we. At the end of the day, uh, it could be two on one, or the safety. I could be by myself in this deep third, or the safety. If he would have went in, the safety would have took him. So, and I, and I, the game plan was, whenever the tight end is out wide or any type, they're going to the him. Ball. Yeah. So like, and they have done. They shown that twice in this game. Every time he out wide, they throwing him the ball no matter what. Yeah, I mean, you're responsible just for that for that deep uh, third there. It seems like, you know, nothing's getting by you. That way you recognize that, you know, five isn't coming out vertical. So it's just, you know, one guy to read, ball's out. And, uh, I mean, even if it's an accurate ball, I don't really feel like there's a chance that's completed, especially with where your help is, where you are. Just a, a tough throw. You know, it almost looks like he is 13 on the opposite side of the field, but progression's just not that way. That's tough. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I didn't even see that. You That's tough. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I the, the way the progression is, it's, you know, right. it's not designed to, to score a touchdown that way. So you guys did your job and no score, which is what you got to do every play. Do your job, and, and you did a great job of it in this game. Yeah, they trying to go back to the Wildcat. Yeah, they were trying a lot of screens later in the game when they found out that they couldn't throw the ball, you know, vertically at all. And it's just screen after screen, like, trying to get anything to work and uh i mean they they looked not good today <laughs> or you know in this game mm, my second kid's getting caught on this game so this is another slant again ah. you're, you're probably gonna have help there from uh from 44 in most cases seems like he's a little shallow but uh you, you know you smother your guy he just makes a nice catch on a, a beautifully thrown ball really but I, th I think the big thing is you can't be like too results oriented in a thing like this. You're watching film. You did your job right. You're smothering him. And what are you gonna do? It's a slant, you know. Bro, I just hate getting caught on that. Mm -hmm. Good catch though by him. Oh yeah, super strong hands. Seems like you're trying to do a good job to rip it out. It's just, it's just a nice play. This is a technique we haven't really seen you do uh, so far this game. Explain what you're doing here and, and what you're trying to what you're trying to accomplish with this uh this back pedal to the side. You're reading the quarterback? Yeah, so I'm basically um blading him. Um like um we we're back in the um a deep third concept, but since he's a one receiver back side got it turns into like a it, everything we do turns into like a man. So mm -hmm. I'm blading him because he's one receiver, um is my guy. Like if he goes deep anywhere deep, I got him. And that's that um, DN drops out in the in the flat just to help me out a little bit, but I have him. Yeah, I mean it's just obviously the progression again isn't towards your side of the field, but it it is perfect. Explain blading to uh you know the viewers that aren't familiar with that as you're as you're turning there. So blading is what um we refer to like when the when there's one receiver in the backside, and so we just call it blade to like disguise like different cover threes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just, it's just a name for it. Yeah, yeah, but like that's that's an NFL.
type concept, basically, right? Because right. like you're going to see NFL CBs do that on Sunday. Uh, and that's not a, a usual technique that a lot of different colleges use just because it is a little bit more uh, complex from what I can tell. But, uh, you know, you guys, you guys do it pretty well. Nothing's mm-hmm. open. Now, here we go. This is a vertical mm-hmm. shot. You just get a chance to open up and run. You know, you do a good job to stay in phase. Pass break up at the top. Ball is obviously not where it should be. It looks like there's pressure probably in the backfield. But, you know, you do a really, really good job here to uh, just open up and run with a clearly pretty fast player. Yeah, shout out to, um, shout out to 13, man. Yeah, Simi Fahoku. His name is, or Fahoko, his name is particularly to, tough to pronounce. It's out of Fahoko, man. And this is where your length comes into play, where you can just get the pass break up, where, you know, smaller corners might be might be trailing that. Might, they might be able to stay in phase the same way that you do, but it's the length at the top to create the pass break up that, you know, really allows you to, to play wherever you want. You can stay in phase with, you know, uh, no fear of getting beat deep. You don't allow any receiver to stack you. Yeah, that's and what j- I did, man. I, I tried to close I tried to close the um, space. I secured the tackle and with my left hand I just played through his hands. I looked at the ball I looked at the ball the whole way through. I'm like, man, man you're not catching this. <laughs> mm. So we haven't seen too much this game just because there haven't been any instances, but you might see it more on fades. When the ball's getting launched up into the air, are you you know, ever turning around for the football, or are you watching at the moment the receiver's hands go up and you're trying to play through their hands? Like, what's the technique on on some of these jump balls? I think um, that's why I specialize in being able to like time it up like to the point where oh, he pushed me crazy. Like <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, he mad. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I do a good job holding my temper too. I, I, I'm I'm for the team, but um, like I was answering the question. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I do a great t- a great job of timing like when the ball is gonna be around. So I try to focus on my man, and like most, I look at his eyes and see when he when he like his eyes get big or something like that. I know like the ball's close. I knew coming into the season I was gonna get a lot of um a lot of balls thrown my way or I'll get tried vertically because I, I'm coming in from JUCO my first year. I mean. Were you guaranteed the starting job when you agreed to go to UCF? Um, no, sir. Yes, you earned that. That's, that's what I would have figured. Yeah, I don't want nothing given to me. I don't want people to understand that. I don't want nothing given to me. Mm-hmm. It's got to be interesting uh, making the transition from JUCO because obviously you talked about the, the game speed is is much faster going from JUCO to, to D1. But you've made that adjustment once, and that's what everyone talks about as the big jump from college to the NFL, is the speed is faster. But you've made that transition once before. It seems like you'll be able to do it again, no problem. You've got the deep speed, you got the long speed to be able to do that. I mean, you're twitchy enough too, and, and not a lot of guys your size with your length are. You're gonna see guys who can, you know, maybe run vertically, but don't have the twitchiness to react underneath. But I feel like playing underneath is probably your biggest strength. Yeah, one one of my biggest strengths, man. Thanks for noticing that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's, it's easy to tell. Um, it's the thing that stands out the most because you know it, you're, it's what you're doing on a down-to-down basis. Teams aren't going vertical every play. It's a lot of underneath stuff. It's a lot of stuff to set up vertical routes, but you're just not giving anything up. Yeah, this this Stanford game, you're putting on a clinic, it seems like. Yeah, I feel like it's one of my best games um, that season. What do you think was uh, maybe your other best game? Or I mean, you played well in a number of them, but what was, what was your other best game that guys might want to watch to uh, to see you take away a receiver? I feel like go watch Cincinnati. Uh, it was one catch that game or pit game. It was zero catches in 2019. Yeah, I, I saw this one play floating, floating around where you make this play on the sideline. You make an interception to uh, just undercut the route. Yes, sir. And you have the awareness to keep your feet in bounds. I'll, let me see if I can find that. Let's see it from the start. Because you're doing something that uh, you didn't do in the Stanford game too much because the guys weren't really testing you deep. The play never really broke down. So is it? it's particularly tough to to stick with your guy, I imagine, when the play starts to break down. Because, you know, most corners are not going to be able to cover for four seconds down the field. But, you know, you never give up on the play here. Right. So, um, I know, like, when the quarterback scrambles, to stay with my man, like, never pursue the quarterback. So, um, 
And that's what I like doing. Like I told my coach, I'm I'm following him. If this my man, we a man. I'm following him wherever he goes. And then that is an NFL play, as we talked about. With you, you're keeping your feet in bounds. Were you thinking about keeping two feet in? Do you know where the sideline is, or is that just no, what happened just, to happen? I really thought about. Um, like that's why my whole game plan. I was just like, I'm gonna stay behind you, stay behind you. I'm gonna act like he open, then I'm just jump in front of you and catch it. But me dragging my feet, I think that's just instinct, right? Just there. instinct, yeah. I mean, you can't teach that. You can't teach that then. <laughs> Look at everybody going crazy for me. That how much love they showed me at UCL, man. I'm so appreciative. And that's that. You said that's your first start too, so they gotta be they gotta be stoked for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> it made me smile right there. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for uh, the the game breakdown. I appreciate you joining me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you guys are going to want to check out Tay Gowan. I'll leave his uh, Twitter link in the description down below. Make sure to check him out uh, and hope that your favorite team drafts him. Yes, sir. Any thank closing you. thoughts? Uh, I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity, man. You, my dog. We locked in here for life. And, <laughs> and just thank all your supporters to even supporting you, man, and getting you to this point. So. I just want to uh, shout out to my doctor, man. I'm doing everything for you. I appreciate you. So, yeah, yes, check sir. out his link below. Uh, NFL Draft is 19 days away from Ooh. from the, night one. So uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Appreciate you. And uh, I'll see yes, you guys sir. in the next one. Take All it right, easy. Thank you. You get in my way, then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah, yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.